Hi everyone, so this is already the second part of the tutorial, so if you missed the introduction, you can click on the annotation, I'll add it on this video. So these are the shin guards, I first designed it on paper, then went in a CAD program called Sims and X, just to put all the numbers in, all the measurements and so on to get this shape, so this is the finished shin guard. This is more about how the molds were made, so this is ready for CNC milling and this is a workflow um, from mold till start so I've started with the molds um, this is for one mold um, then you just go down and you can see how everything was created so this was the pattern that came out uh, ready for CNC milling so you can see the edges are closed um, so that the mold can be milled so here we're going down and this is the first shape I've got so this was the design and this was the start of the project so after that I always like to give myself a visual idea of what I can expect so this is 3ds max so this is a rendering software to get real-life images of what you're creating so here I'm making the pattern so um, this is a plug that I'll be using and cast in aluminium so you can see here from mold till cast how everything is done so then you add some textures and then you render it out and by doing it that way you can get some images that are real looking so just to give myself an idea of what you get so you can go really far in this get real life images but I didn't put that much time in it um, it was more to give myself an ID so this is a product that should come out out of the molds by working that way I can also find some defaults um, by seeing under locking of the molds um, to avoid the parts being stuck into the molds so once again this is the rendered image um, just to give myself an ID I can work for further on this as well if I want to so this is a CNC milling part so I've used a block of, block of MDF uh, wood I did this because it's cheaper to work in wood than aluminium and so on but normally if I had the money and I would be able to do it I would do it in aluminium so different software programs are used different mills so the first mill was more about uh, cutting out the rough shape then my friend just changed the mill to a finishing mill just to get a smooth finish onto the molds so he he's running again through the software program so a lot of you might think CNC milling is just an easy and cheap and fast way just to create stuff but a lot of engineering and programming goes into this so don't underestimate this step so these are some beauty shots about the machine he made so he built it from scratch you can see a video in the description down below so here the mill is passing on to the last layers of milling just to give myself this finish so this is the finished product that came out of the CNC mill. So after that I still had to do some sanding and so on um, just to be able to apply the 2K spray paint on top. So a rough sanding was done before this. So this is what you can expect from a 2K spray can. So you also always see a red dot or mostly see a red uh, button on top you can um, put down this top just to activate the button on the bottom of the spray can so first firmly shake the can just to make sure that everything is shaken well inside of the can then we can go to the activation step so you just put this button on the bottom of the can and then you just have to apply some pressure so I was struggling, struggling a bit to put this button on the bottom but everything went, went well so as you can see here the activator is added into the spray can 
So then once again you just shake everything well. So it's just like mixing polyester resin or epoxy resin. Um, there's two parts, so an activator and the resin. So this is exactly the same in the spray can. So you can use this spray can for three till four days I guess. If you keep it in cold con conditions, like maybe in your fridge or something, you can you can make this a bit longer. So I did four coats just to make sure that everything was covered um, like I wanted it to be and just sanded it in between coats. So then I've put the mold aside, uh, covered it well so there's no dust coming into the paint. And then what I always like to do is just, if I have some leftovers, just use some scrap just to test it out. So I have did some wood tests on aluminium and so on as well, just to test in the oven for example, at which temperatures it can um, hold and so on. So here I'm sanding, so once again, like in all my projects, uh, make sure the finish is good on the mold so you don't have to work that much onto your parts that are coming out of it so I'm dry and wet sanding I've started with a 600 uh, went up in grid till 2000 so uh, the finish was more than okay so it takes a lot of time and just to show you here this is wet sanding it's a bit less aggressive and um, it's very important just to wash your water and your sanding paper in between so as well as your molds so just to show you here small residues of sanding paper may be left into your water or into your cup and um, just being annoying when you're using a lighter sandpaper giving that grit and scratches into your part so the last part like always is buffing the parts so here's my little buffing pad I'm using with uh, just a normal drill so this is an electric drill um, so I don't have to keep in mind of batteries running low and so on so this is the first course I'm using so this is a rough course um, just spray it and just put it all around onto your molds then you can use your drill just flatten it out and then you just do some buffing so this is how it's done and how you can get remarkably better results by doing this so this is a result you might think it's might be looking a bit weird but it's all about reflection so you can see here my fingers are reflecting well onto the mold so this was the first course so you can expect an even better results with a finer course so this is the second course I've used just same way um, it's very straightforward um, you just brush it open and then do some buffing So at the end you might think all oh, the results are, are looking so bad but then you just have to buff off all the excess and then you get uh, remarkable results and that's what we are doing it for. So this is the shine of the first mold. So ready to cast the aluminium epoxy in the next tutorial. Thanks for watching, by clicking on the left video you can go to the next video and when you click on the right video you can follow the previous tutorials I've made about pre prepreg carbon fiber. More than 500 people already like my Facebook page so have a look maybe you might like it as well. If you like this video give my video a thumbs up, comment and share with your friends they might like it as well maybe. So subscribe for more and see you next time.